Good morning everybody, hope you're all well. Lovely and sunny here today. So in this video, I wanna see exactly what the running costs are in terms of fuel for a diesel compared to a plug-in electric hybrid compared to a fully electric car. We've got to take this car anyway in for a service, about 25, 30 miles away. So kind of distance uh, that's probably typical of a commute, for example, to work in the morning. And then we've got to take this car just up the road for that uh, to have an inspection as well. And I'm going to be in convoy in the plug-in hybrid. So in this video, we're just going to reset the trips in these, see what efficiency we get out of each car. And then we can work out the costs of that. So this could be the cost of your daily commute, diesel versus petrol versus electric. Let's see what we get. Okay, so this might seem like a bit of an odd mixture of cars, but as with like, nearly all our videos, it's something that we're doing anyway. You know, when we do a trip and side-by-side -side comparison, we often have to do those anyway. So this is just in a line of work, a typical day out. Let's see what we can, you know, record out of this because I think this is quite interesting. It's a, it's a not untypical distance for doing a daily commute to work, for example. And so, you know, how, how will the running costs of these three different cars compare? three litre diesel in that Mercedes. Yep, big engine, more efficient diesels are of course available, but there's a lot of three litre diesels in big executive cars and Range Rovers and Land Rovers and all the stuff like just outside that showroom there. So, you know, there's a lot of people doing this journey in those cars. If you like a bit of power, but you want efficiency, this is the way a lot of people go. The, that Tesla Model S 85D, uh, that's about five, six years old now, that car. You know, how does that compare in terms of its running costs? If that's charged from home and you're doing a day like this, what will that cost in electric? And then we've got the plug-in hybrid. And the plug-in hybrid here, it's a bit of a, you know, a, a mixed bag. Some people love these and some people think, what's the point of these? I think there is a valid argument. It's how I got into electric cars. It was a, a good stepping stone where it can be more affordable. A car like this isn't too expensive. You can run around doing all your school journeys and sit outside the school with the heating on and drive to work, all fully electric. And then when the electric runs out, you've got that petrol engine behind it. So you don't have kind of range anxiety. You don't have to recharge them and all that kind of stuff. Um, the downside is you're carrying around both lots of stuff. You've got battery and a motor and you've still got an engine and a gearbox and an exhaust and all that kind of thing. But So there's pros and cons, uh, but I do get the argument because at the end of the day, that's how I got into electric cars. And it was with one of these. It was actually a Vauxhall Ampera, which is more common in the UK than this Chevrolet Volt, um, but the same car underneath. And that's what got me into it. And I thought, this is great. I love the electric side of thing. It's so cheap to run, but you know, I soon realised I didn't want the petrol side. I didn't want the petrol engine and the running costs of that. So I then went fully electric. And I think that's what a lot of people do. And we see that quite a lot in our business where uh, we sell electric cars to people when they come in from plug-in hybrids. So this Chevy Volt, same as a Vauxhall Ampere, this is actually still, in my opinion, one of the best hybrids out there as a plug-in hybrid. Because it, it is so... Um, it was so under the radar when it came out, and yet it's probably the best car to wear a Vauxhall badge, I think, uh, or in this case, a Chevrolet badge, because it actually has a reasonable size drive battery. I can't remember the exact capacity now. I want to say 17 kilowatt hours, but I could be wrong. I used to know everything about these, but it is still a reasonable size. So actually, with one of these, we find we can do 30, 40, 45 miles, roughly speaking, on electric only which is actually better than most of even the modern plug-in hybrids. So you've got BMW 330Es and Volvo XC90s and all these kind of plug-in hybrids. From my experience, more typically do up to about 20 miles of electric-only range. My wife had a Golf GTE. That was about 20, 25 miles of electric-only range, but it served us well. School run every day, just pure electric. And then if you do the longer journey, don't, yeah, no need to recharge. You just can do longer journeys. But you just have to put petrol in, of course. Petrol is super expensive now, as is diesel, so more and more, I think, going fully electric is beneficial. Uh, but I tell you what, whilst I'm driving this car now, I still love the Ampera and the Chevy Volt. I bought this car about three, four years ago from Johnny Smith, and um, he loved it, I love it. We've been running it day in, day out. We often use it as a courtesy car. One of my colleagues drives it. We do journeys like this with it. Obviously, we try and do the local stuff with it so it's pure electric, but it's just a fantastic car. Some of this is starting to look a bit older now, but it is still a lovely thing to drive. It's smooth, it's got a nice ride, it's got a nice steering, 
And this car here, it's nearly 10 years old. It's got, I think, uh, it's got 66,000 miles. No squeaks, no rattles. Drives absolutely lovely. So, and I've never had a problem with it. You know, of all the Amperes I've had, very, very little issues. Maybe the little button that does the keyless locking can fail on the handles, but very rare to have a problem. And we've never had a single bean of a problem with this car. Only ever just routine servicing, which is pretty cheap as well, to be honest. So. Uh, still a big fan of these. Anyway, anyway, I digress. That's a bit about the uh, Ampere and Volt. And I might do another video separately, kind of about this car, maybe even with Johnny one day, and um, you know we can talk about it because uh, it's still going strong and it's still a fantastic car. So on this journey, we're all in convoy. I've got the other guys behind me here, so we're all at the same speed, same conditions, same road. Uh, so we can't have different driving styles really that would affect efficiency. And we've got about 15, actually about 10 miles of kind of country roads like I'm on now. Then we're gonna pop out onto some uh, dual carriageway motorway and then we've got some higher speed sections. So a little mixture of driving and the first few miles were more like in town. So I think pretty indicative of what you might have on a commute. You know, if you live right in London, obviously you're kind of all in town, but you know, not uncommon. So pretty real world test, I reckon. But Gintz is grinning like a Cheshire cat in that Mercedes. He's a bit of a Mercedes S-Class fan. Obviously he likes electric cars, but S-Class is a very nice place to be. You have to give it that. I've driven the EQS and it's basically the same as the S-Class. It's just fully electric, which suits it even better. It's, you know, 100% smooth and silent and costing and relaxing and isolated from the outside world. So really interesting to see when we get more, uh, you start seeing the Mercedes EQS here in the UK. Uh, I think they're hoping to start deliveries of those soon. I'd love to get my hands on one of those and do a good long range test with it. Um, yeah, very comfortable. So here we are now out onto the motorway, just merging on bring up to 70 miles per hour and this is where this is going to hurt the uh this, this vault in particular so wind resistance it's less efficient and the electric battery will drop down fairly quickly and so if you're doing a lot of motorway miles a plug-in hybrid can work if you're doing the short trips but as soon as you're doing longer journeys actually and it goes onto the engine and runs the engine you'll often find that a diesel is more efficient actually um, so I haven't used the engine yet today um, but that the electric only range will, will fall now at this kind of speed and then we'll end up um, having to burn some pun petrol uh, on this so the most amount of battery only miles I've got out of a, this car's Chevy Volt has been 52 miles of electric only range so that was yeah probably summer warm weather uh, it was a couple of years ago now i can't remember exactly but you know it was about as good as you get it's about 50 miles uh, this wasn't quite fully charged this morning and it was cold um cold start cold battery so uh this was about 80 percent charged um i would say because we've only got a number of bars here and the first one or two are missing so about 80 percent and i've covered 29.4 miles now which has been quite a lot of motorway let's like say motorway density efficient uh, efficiency a little bit uh, i've just got a little bit left it's given me two miles of electric only range left and we're nearly at the first stop Mercedes so it might complete all this on electric only but this is with plug-in hybrids it, this is still a bigger battery than most even modern plug-in hybrids so between 20 and 30 miles is about the normal range for a plug-in hybrid um, my wife's GTE would do up to about 25 for example so you know the, the Chevy Volt really was ahead of its time uh, and other than something like a Polestar 1 really could do a pretty sensible miles on the electric only however we're about to run out although we're at the first stop now so I think I will make all this on just electric but this is the car that we're going to drive back to the office in so and we can see then what miles per gallon we still get out of the car even when it does have to run the petrol engine as well but yeah i'm very nearly out of the battery let's go into its regen mode here as we come off this slip road make the most of this what you can do on the motorway by the way is you can choose to then charge the battery if you're going to run the engine anyway you could actually just run it for a few minutes 10 minutes 20 minutes half an hour and actually recharge your drive battery so if you're going to come off the motorway maybe go into town or into london or something like that you can then have electric only in town. So although you're burning some petrol on the motorway, you're doing it out of town, you know, and your emissions are out of town, but then when you come off the motorway, engine off again, you know, so that can be done with most uh, plug-in hybrids as well. You can kind of choose when's a good time to actually burn a bit of petrol, recharge it, and then keep emission free around town where you can. 
still going 30.6 miles okay i did that all in one go actually so 31.4 miles i still got two miles of battery left i didn't even start with the full battery so no petrol no emissions burnt at all however we are going to drive back in this so we can gauge what it does for miles per gallon when it does have to run the engine as well so uh, but this is the end of the bit where we're going to do all these cars in one go we're just outside mercedes here in southampton uh dropping that to mercedes for a service and change oil and all that kind of stuff that you don't have to worry about with electric cars by the way um but uh let's get a picture of the trips of those so we can compare them directly from that convoy journey. You've done 46.2 miles in this Volvo. It's got 132 miles per gallon. Because obviously it's running the engine half the time. What do you reckon it's going to have when you get back? Probably 85. Okay, if it's above 85, what can the prize be? Car? No. <laughs> Forget that, pal. <laughs> I think that's a great prize. <laughs> I'll keep the car. Nah. I see, I see a lot. I make you a cup of tea, sort of thing. Oh, well, I'll put or whatever. <laughs> foot down. <laughs> see you later. Oh, I put foot down. Nothing happened. Okay. So, look, it shows you what I've got here. You've got to keep it as efficient as possible. Yep. Yeah, bit of battery, bit of engine, battery drive. But you can't really go in the middle lane at 58, so you got to pick up to 70. It's got to well, be real. It's going down the hill now. You can put it in regen mode. It's in regen mode. Our vault has just hit 66666 miles. There we go. Okay, so we got 47.7 miles covered and average of 124 miles per gallon because as we're on the motorway now, it is using the engine for a large part of it. So The way the miles per gallon is dropping, I don't think it's going to be 85 miles, it's going to be less than that. Ginch reckons he can get back with 85 miles per gallon. I don't think so. We'll see. <laughs> and Eagle's really comfortable as a six-foot person in the back. It can be better than that. A little bit more legroom. You're in, you're not too bad. Considering Gintz is driving, so... Yeah, Gintz is... All the way back. He's late. He didn't even make a change on the seat. There was Richard's configuration here and there we go. Really? Can you reach the pedals? <laughs> 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 Okay, so here's some calculations and some numbers and data. So I'll try and rattle through this as quick as I can and we'll put some figures up on the screen here. Um, I'm going to base the petrol cost at £1.67 per litre, which is apparently the UK current average at the time of filming this. Diesel, £1.79 per litre at the current time of filming this is the average in the UK. And it's hard to get the exact number for the uh, kilowatt hours, but 20.11 is what I've used because that's what I pay on a flat tariff at home, which is a variable rate. So, and I think the current average is, is about that, although it does go up and down quite a lot. So this, how does this work out in terms of the cost for that trip and then sort of cost per mile? Let me try and rattle off some numbers for you here. So that Mercedes, by the way, the 350D there, that averaged a pretty incredible 48.7 miles per gallon. So I think that <laughs> impressed me for a car that size, that engine, but it was remarkably efficient. So 48.7, I think is pretty representative of an efficient combustion car. You all agree? I think so. There'd be some with more and some with less, but again, there's a lot of variables in this. Um, on that trip then, that one-way journey, which was 31.4 miles, would have cost £5.24, according to my numbers. Let's break that down, 16.7 pence per mile. So if you're gonna do 10,000 miles, 1,670 pounds a year. The uh, Tesla, all electric, uh, that would have cost, uh, it would have averaged 3.45 miles per kilowatt hour. Uh, so every kilowatt hour you pay at home, that's how far you can go. Um, that average 3.45, which would have cost one pound 83 on that journey. So if you do 10,000 miles a year at that kind of journey, that would cost you about 580 pounds. And then the, the Volt, so going there, 31.4 miles was all electric on that car. It was actually slightly more efficient than the test at 3.58 miles per kilowatt hour. It used uh, about nine kilowatt hours going there. That would basically work out to £1.76 for that journey, 5.6 pounds uh, pence per mile, so £560 for 10,000 miles a year of that kind of journey. However, I'm also giving the numbers now for when we did the return and round trip with that Chevrolet Volt, it had to go onto the petrol engine as well. That was 88.7 miles. Now, that would work out with some uh, petrol used as well as the electric used, 9.1 kilo hours of electric, 1.2 gallons of petrol. Uh, that's UK gallons, not American gallons. Um, that would have cost 11, 2, 11 pounds uh, and two pence for that return trip of nearly 90 miles. So it works at about 12 pence per mile. If you did 15,000 miles a year because you just did a 90 mile day and you do that fairly regularly, that would cost you 1,800 pounds in fuel and electric. The Mercedes would cost you 
Um, 17 pence per mile, so £14.91 for that return trip. 17 pence per mile, 15,000 miles a year, £2,550 in diesel. The Tesla um, opens up the gap here. Again, efficient car, all electric, no fuel at all. That would have cost a grand total of £5.17 for that 90 mile trip. And that would work out to about six pence per mile, £900 a year for 15,000 miles of driving. So within all that, a lot of variables. And you've got to remember with this that with electric, there are often cheaper overnight tariffs for charging your car. So you might pay half that amount. You might pay a quarter of that amount to charge your electric car. If you have solar panels, even better, battery storage, you may even pay nothing up front for those, uh, the fuel costs for that. So there are a lot of variables in this, of course, but hopefully that gives you some idea of some comparable numbers in this case point to scenarios there. So I hope that's been useful. Just as that example from today, lots of different variables, but you can see the difference as you do more and more miles, just going electric is ultimately the cheaper way. Plug-in hybrids have their place, depending on use and how often you plug them in. And an efficient diesel, it's not too bad. Remember, if you've got a car that does half the miles per gallon, you're easily looking at double those costs there. So um, hopefully that's been useful. Try to run it up as quick as I can and we'll call it a wraps on that one. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the little like button and leave us a comment below if you can. Stay subscribed for the next video. Hey everyone, thanks for watching our videos. If you like our content and want to see more, don't forget to not only subscribe, but also hit the bell icon for notifications so you don't miss any new videos as they're uploaded. Plus, we're also on Instagram. Just look up R Simons or RSEV. Us, we're on Facebook and Twitter. So lots of news stories and things as we go on each one of those channels.